Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Let's get you prepped for what's working and not working on Wall Street. Let's get you ready and gaining and stepping towards retirement. That's the goal of the show. Whether it's investing, earning, saving, insuring, surviving emergencies, having things like an emergency cash flow or emergency cash reserve so that you can have cash flow during the tough times. I've never dipped in my emergency cash fund. That's the hint. That's the tip. That's the trick. It's not there for fun. Okay. Yesterday, the NASDAQ started off really, really bad. Microsoft disappointed. And it's funny because the night before Microsoft came out with their earnings and the stock was up 10 bucks. And I told you I almost bought it right before the close. And I decided not to. I decided to give value over growth. And it was up 10 bucks. I was like, Dad, what? Did I just miss a $10 pop? And then by the, the, the time it officially opens, not in aftermarket, it was down 10 bucks. And then yesterday, by the time the market's closed, it's down like half a buck. Back to where I would have bought it at. Like, what? Say, what? So NASDAQ was down fractions yesterday. SP 500 was down literally point, point zero 0.02. Just, 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 a, just a teeny tiny bit. Do you remember the movie Orca? Orca, the killer whale, which was uh, the studio heads were like, we got to make a movie that's better than Jaws. Let's let's have a killer whale. And the very first scene that a guy is hunting and uh, I don't know, I guess he gets a whale for whale blubber, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But the whale somehow, some way, some shape, some form drops its baby on the boat and the baby dies and the whale somehow breaks free. And the whale looks at the captain just with one eye hanging out of the water. And he's like, I'm going to come get you someday. And, you know, if there's one hunter you don't have to be afraid of, it's it's a shark or maybe a killer whale because you don't have to go in deep water. Right. Wrong. So the. the what is it? on a boat on a kid hangs over the ocean for some reason and in the very first scene the uh, second scene the uh whale starts punching the the legs of the house and legs of the house and I, you can't make this stuff up and uh, bo derrick and it's it's the house is gonna fall in the water and she's hanging there and he's holding her and he's like he's gonna, he's, I'm gonna pull you up baby no don't worry about it and then the killer whale jumps out of the water the most amazing jump you've ever seen and bites her leg off instead of eating her whole and chopping her in half just like just like a little little like ah, just a, that's what the s p 500 was down yesterday just a, it wasn't much i know you're saying that's a long way to go for that rob movies really impacted my childhood i used to rent movies from um the library or i used to check them out because i lived overseas and anyway you get the idea so the Dow jones industrial average was up just a same thing. It's 0.03%. 10 year treasury sits at 3.44%. There was a lot of stress yesterday. A lot of fear. A lot of money went into the treasury. US government pays their debt back. Although, here's the quote of the day that I want to throw down for you because I think it's a damn good quote. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, why do I? Oh, I'm going to have to find it. Oh, why did I do that to myself? I had it, then I lost it. Basically, it's a billionaire saying the way the United States government is playing with a debt ceiling is like a bunch of alcohol, binge drinking alcoholics. And I agree with that statement. Who's going to pay our debt down for our children in the future? I believe the children are our future. And the answer is, it's not going to be our children. It's too much debt. Our debt ceiling is crazy high. It's getting higher. But anyway, let's go back to the stock market, shall we? Because I don't want to digress too much, and I've already digressed a lot. Um, a lot of talk in the news about mass attacks of violence and what they have in common and what they don't. Almost all the attackers acted alone and are men. Though attackers ranged in age of 14 to 87 so far this year, the average age is about 34. Nearly 73% of attacks involve firearms, and most are fatal. The remaining attacks they didn't involve firearms were mostly non-fatal. And people are talking about gun bans. And sure enough, do gun stocks go higher or gun stocks go lower? Like a Smith & Wesson. You can go out and if you see a shooting, gun stocks usually go higher after 
a mass killing. I'm not telling you to do that. I think that's sick. I think that's crazy. But it's out there. Um, Ukraine's getting tanks. My first thought, you're like, yay, Zelensky's going to be able to protect his own country. And I'm like, boo, oil prices are probably going to go higher. This is about to get a little bit uglier. Now, again, I know there's human beings involved, and I'm not, I'm just telling you where my finance brain works. And I'm not proud of that in any way, shape, or form. Let's see, what else do we have to hit as far as top stories of the day? Let's let's get let's get prepped for today. Let's not let's skip over yesterday and move straight to today. Tesla reported better than expected fourth quarter results and provided better than expected commentary on demand patterns, noting that it has seen the strongest orders year to date in history. Stock up eight uh, percent this morning. The response to Tesla's report has put a bid in other mega cap stocks as well. Um, so you're seeing the Apples and the Microsofts and the Googles do okay. There's guidance from the likes of IBM, Dow, and Sherwin-Williams that were tepid results or tepid guidance. Um, so Tesla's helping the market today. Whereas IBM, Dow, and Sherwin-Williams, not so much. Chevron Texaco or Chevron, ticker symbol CVX. I, I think they used to be called Chevron Texaco, and I think they're just Chevron. They announced a better than expected capital return plans that included $75 billion, billion with a B, a $75 billion share buyback, a 6% increase in its dividend. Those shares are up 3.6%. I would own Chevron, and I have owned Chevron in the past, and I own just a teeny tiny of Chevron right now. It is not material. It's something that I that I didn't clean out of my portfolio correctly. Um, <clears throat> for income. That's that's the only reason I would own it. And I'm not going to play this whole well, electric vehicles versus oil. Right now, they pay a lot of money back to their shareholders. So we got GDP this morning. The advanced fourth quarter GDP showed real GDP increasing an annual rate of 2.9%, following a 3.2% increase in the third quarter. That's not recessionary. But we're not talking about right now recession. We're talking about back half of 2023 compared to back half of 2022. Key takeaway is the economy's long way away from a recession in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Although consumer spending did moderate in GDP to numbers. Uh, the low level of initial claims indicate that a tight labor market, which is something that should keep the Fed concerned about wage inflation. You know, we can cut demand. We're going to have certain demand, right? But we can cut the luxury goods. So we can say, hey, cell phones, we're going to buy fewer cell phones this year. But there's going to be some things that we can't cut. And there's going to be what's called revenge travel this year, where we travel a little bit too far, a little bit too expensively. There's going to be things that we cut. One thing that we can't fight in inflation, it's very tough to fight wage inflation. And right now, we're still in an environment where you should be asking your boss for a raise. I'm not telling you to go in there and get fired today. Don't quote me. <clears throat> but you got the idea. So if I were to settle, uh, sum up what we're looking at today is better than feared is good enough. The data is better than feared, whether it be Tesla or whether it be fourth quarter GDP. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black. Big seminar coming up. You can sign up for it February, early February at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. Brought to you by EP Wealth. This is the Rob Black Show. Okay, embarrassing segment coming up. I'm going to tell you I have a crush on. And you're going to say that's totally inappropriate because aren't you married? And the answer is yes. Okay, let's hit some business before I get into making myself look like a fool. The economy grew more than expected in GDP. I bring this up because I just reported fourth quarter GDP numbers for you, and I forgot to tell you, we're looking at a recession coming up in the fourth quarter of 2023, or we're thinking probably late 2023, third quarter, fourth quarter. And the numbers that came out this morning, that's going to be the comparable. 2023 fourth quarter is going to look worse than 2022 fourth quarter. That's the thought. It'll be negative comparatively for two quarters in a row, equaling said recession. But we don't know that's going to happen because the labor market's very, very, very strong right now. But the economy growing more than expected tells you that what the Fed did in 2022 really hasn't hit us. 
And they were totally right for doing it because we're spending like we're walking through a graveyard right now. Like it's Friday the 13th. We're walking through a graveyard. It's midnight. I'm walking with a teenage virgin. Everything will be okay. (laughs) Right. And then out of the tombstone pops Jason and he's going to go after me. She hasn't committed sins in the world. So I'm the goner. That's the way we're kind of approaching that. Fourth quarter of 2023. We're kind of like, eh, it may not happen. No, it, it, it anyway, the point being is the Fed raised interest rates a lot last year in 2022. And nine months later, because the Fed, let's say they started in March. Nine months later, it's not really slowing our economy down. There, it's a lot more analysis than just that. But I want to give you one really powerful statement every segment. And that's a good one. Now let me give you some bad ones. Um, one of the stories that I'm putting together for TV, because TV is a way different audience than podcast radio, is that there's going to be a new TV show coming. Fake heiress Anna Sorkin is getting her own reality show called Delvey's Diner Club or Delvey's Dinner Club. Convicted con artist Anna Sorkin is set to work her own reality show while being filmed in her home because she's under house arrest. She's serving house arrest in a New York apartment after overstaying her visa. I don't know if you got into the whole inventing Anna thing. I, I found it kind of boring, but I found the character very interesting. She now thinks that people are interested in her and she wants to show the true side of her that the journalist who put together the the Netflix special or the Netflix show kind of did her a bad saying that wasn't really me. That was a person that she saw that wasn't really me. And she she faked being an heiress and she got like free things in life for a long period of time by faking being an heiress. And it was a pretty detailed, pretty uh, encompassing lie. Which, you know, how long is it until that the senator or the House of Representative uh, Santos, George Santos, gets a show? It's coming. Because we're fascinated by people who can consume them, consume their lives in lies. But OK, so she's going to invite and it, uh, Delvey's Diner Club or Dinner Club. I keep doing that. I'm sorry. Um, Anna Sorkin. She's going to invite guests over and it's being produced by Wheelhouse Entertainment, which is Jimmy Kimmel's production company. He's going to invite famous people like Elon Musk and Sam Bankman Freed and Madonna to her home and she's going to cook dinner for him. I find that, okay, that's a little kind of like, this is America. That's going to work. People are going to watch it. When Elizabeth Holmes was on trial, young women were dressing up like Elizabeth Holmes outside the courthouse because she's a rock star for being basically a fraud. We are a we are a messed up society, but in the inventing Anna Netflix special, I really really have a crush on. If I have a celebrity crush, it's it's the girl who played her. I think her name's Julia Rose. She was in Ozark, and I just find her fascinating. Um, just the curly hair. It's not something I'm totally into. But it totally works on her. Um, hold on a second. Uh, give me one second. I want to make sure I get the names right. Julia Garner, I'm sorry. So she's married to someone famous, so I'm not going to stalk her. Um, uh, this is a segment that uh, hold on. Uh, it's worth it because it shows all my jealousies and all my pettiness in life. Oh, she's married to Mark Foster from Foster the People, who happens to be a band that I really like. So I find her attractive and I have a celebrity crush on her. And she's married to a guy who I really would I would like to be him. I'd like to be the lead singer of a, an alternative rock band and be able to dance in a silly fashion like he dances in a silly fashion. All the young kids with the pumped up kicks better run, maybe that guy. Um, but in my house, we watched a little bit of Inventing Anna. And I just loved the way she played the character, Julia Garner. And the accent was horrible. She she would say things like, 
I work for my success. I earn my accomplishments. So she's got a little bit of that vocal fry and then a little bit of a fake German accent going, pay attention. Maybe you'll be smart like me. So me and my kids were running around the house quoting her as her. You have to get, you have to work hard to get what you want. I've always known that. Who am I? This club, this foundation will be who I am, what I am. And it was like, it doesn't even make sense. At one point in time, she goes, why are you wearing those clothes? You look poor. <laughs> and I thought one of her best quotes, and I wrote it down while I was watching it. Um, if you ever see me on my phone, I'm writing down little notes and ideas. She said, men fail upwards all the time. Men fail upwards all the time. Because man, our society likes to tear down women. Life is for living. You know, life is for living. So they're going to make a TV show out of her. And uh, I don't think I'll watch it, but that's where we are as Americans. Southwest Airlines is still feeling the impact of its holiday meltdown. The stock is falling. Southwest Airlines once had a streak where they were profitable, profitable, profitable. During uh, the third quarter of 2001, i.e. 9-11, they stayed profitable. Or they basically stayed off. They never, ever succumbed to losing the and hemorrhaging the the amount of money that American Airlines, Continental, US Air, like they all, every airline company is run like poop. Southwest has run well. And they've got a potential straight coming from their pilots and they had a disastrous holiday season. Um, Long story short, I took, flew my family to Vegas for seeing a couple shows over New Year's and it went fine. But there was bad weather across the rest of the United States. So a lot of Southwest flights went bad didn't get up, people didn't get home. CEO said everyone who flew that week, $300 credit. So my family got like $1,200 credit and nothing was out. So I gave that those credit points to charity, but you get the idea. Big seminar coming up in Cupertino, mid-February, CFP Chad Burton talking about income and retirement. Sign up today at Rob Black Show. Com. What's the best way to choose a financial advisor? Download our guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. I work for my success. I earn my accomplishments. Better than feared is good enough on Wall Street today. Let's talk about what we're seeing out there. Tesla's favorable earnings report. Driving a continued rebound of effort into mega cap stocks. If you got freaked out in 2022 by seeing some of your stocks fall 30%, some that had never fallen 30% in your investment career, like companies like Apple and Microsoft and Google and Amazon, if that freaked you out, you have an issue with emotions and investing. If you said, I invest in great companies, I don't invest for one year, I invest for 30 years, and you've owned them for 10 years, 15 years, five years, you're probably like, I'm doing okay. But if you found yourself last year stressed, use rallies to reposition yourself in more defensive areas. But know that you're going to be losing a little bit of opportunity, opportunity cost. If there's a rebound that's bigger than expected. And so far in 2023, the rebound has been bigger than expected. Do you still want to sell your Amazons, your Apples, your Googles, your Facebooks, your Teslas? Tesla stock pops is the worst case scenario. Fears subside. Now, I'm not going to say, woohoo, we've done it. Because I don't think we have. I've got two children who are young men, and they, they both are going to the gym now, which makes a dad really proud. There's nothing better than going for a two mile run with your kid. There's nothing better. Southwest lost $800 million due to the holiday travel meltdown. So everything's not perfect, right? That's what I'm trying to get at. The rebound's not perfect. The average price of a dozen eggs reaches a record 138% annual increase. And that's where I was going at with my children. Protein. Eggs historically are an incredible source of protein at an incredibly low price. You could say that around the world. Now, I have a fenced in yard and it's got kind of got some forest in it. I know you're saying that's not quite the right terms. 
horse can't be in a yard. It's something like that. And I'm like, can I get chickens? Can I get chickens and lay eggs? Can I be that weirdo neighbor that gets chickens and gives eggs to my neighbors? And I quickly decided that's probably not a good idea. Because there, where I live, there's also coyotes. And said chickens are going to be eaten <laughs> by the coyotes. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But when I see eggs up 138%, my instant thought is inflation. The Fed still has work to do. And the employment reports that we saw today, first time unemployment claims, again, tells us the Fed still has work to do. If they're truly worried about wage inflation, which once you get a raise, it's very tough to claw it back. With chickens, there was bird flu last year, and we had to kill 57 million chickens. That's a lot of chickens. Um, the previous worst was 50 million, I think, in 2008. I don't know the year. I think it was 2018. But bird flu comes around, and every now and then it kills a lot of chickens. Um, there was a joke about a dirty chicken murderer that as a kid, I don't remember the punchline. Um, or I don't remember the joke. I just remember the punchline and anyway that's a lot of dead chickens so how do we how do we solve egg inflation we we, we put two chickens and a rooster and a chicken and a hen and in uh an airbnb and we say okay guys let nature take over and we play some sexy music i want to uh rub your beak all night and you you get the idea right zooby zooby zoo Zoomy, zoomy, zoomy. Mad Men. It's in my library. If my producer wants to find any music to help me out here. So, yeah, we're going to get the chickens to make babies. And the babies are going to have like, you know, egg abilities. And we can fix the 138% inflation in egg prices. But with wages, it's tough to say, okay, Jim, we gave you a raise at Walmart to $18.50. Yeah, we're, we're cutting your salary down to $17 this year. Really tough to claw that stuff back. The Fed still has work to do, in my opinion. But let's talk big picture. Let's not talk small pitch right now. Um, Tesla is favorable. That's helping mega cap stocks stay. Although it's not a straight up after one hour. We're not. It's not like we're go, zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon. It's not that. It's a heavy slate of earnings news. It's getting mixed reactions. The, you're seeing the treasury strengthen, showing the strength in the economy. New home sales increased 2.3% month over month in December to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 616,000 units. On a year over year basis, new home sales were down 26%. On a month to month basis, lovely. On a year over year, disaster. The takeaway is pullback in mortgage rates has spurred some renewed demand among home buyers. Right now, if we want the Fed to go away, we want the stock market to go lower. We want job cuts. We want earnings cuts. And we want things like housing starts to fall apart. We want a lot of bad news. Now, just to, as long as we're moving in the right direction in the long term, like we can go two steps up, one step back. As long as we're moving in the right direction is the idea. We can take a year off or two years off. But what we don't want to do is sit around for two or three years and go, well, geez, you know, eggs are up another 100% and wages are up another 14%. I know you're saying, I want wages higher, Rob. You're wrong on that one. I'm not. As wages continue to go higher and higher when they're above inflation, we look for ways of replacing workers. I have no doubt that we're going to see more and more artificial intelligence. It just, again, it's, it's the McDonald's effect. When we raised minimum wage uh, 10, 15 years ago, you'd go into McDonald's and there are like 40 employees in McDonald's. Now you go in and there's like four and you got to get your own soda, but it looks good. They put in a cool kiosk. You had to do your own ordering from a kiosk. When I was 16 years old, going to a McDonald's meant I can stand in line where there was a cute girl in the cash line. Instead of the guy with a pimply face, I'd like, oh, well, his line's only two people deep. I'm going to stand in the one with a girl who's, you know, five customers deep, but she's like, I may be able to say, hey, I like your name, Susie. And she goes, what do you want? Get out of my line. Stop flirting with me. I've got McDonald's grease all over me. But she's been replaced with a kiosk. So 16 year old Rob, he's going to have to change his game. I know you're saying you've told that story with standing in line with bank lines. Yes, 
yes, I had no game until I had a job. And then suddenly I was a little bit more attractive. Hmm. CSX, big train company. They're talking about business. I like studying train companies because everything in my house right now, everything in my office right now came from a train or a truck to the store, whether it be my camera, whether it be my microphone, whether it be my desk. Well, that came in a boat to a train, to a truck. So anytime I can hear CSX talk, a transport, I'm like, let's see what they have to say. Shall we? Okay, kids. The CEO said the business is off to a good start in January. Okay, good, good. There is strength in the automotive and coal. So we're bringing a lot of cars from like Mexico and coal from Canada. Boxcar orders are up in December and January. So businesses are saying we're going to need more freight. We're going to need more. And the thing I like about train companies, and I would have no problem owning CSX. To me, the, how many how many players are in trains? If I had a four-fingered hand, I can count on one hand how many train companies there are. I hope you guys appreciate how much effort I put in the show. I'm not boring. If anything, I am a train wreck of a human being, but I'm not boring. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty on West, Post, uh, West Coast ports. I wanted to say West Post courts, but that's wrong. So ultimately, I didn't get enough out of the CEO there other than it's not horrible. But it's also not great. That's something I can work with. As they said in the movie, Dumb and Dumber. So you say I got a chance. When the pretty woman told a very unattractive Jim Carrey. Not if you were the last man on the planet. <laughs> and he goes, so you're saying I got a chance. Chevron had a great quarter. No, 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 no. They're going to release uh, earnings today. I'm looking at their numbers now on a year over year basis. Whoops. Growth of 11%, uh, 12% they're expecting. Earnings is a 429 versus 256. Um, we're paying attention to oil companies because if there's one area that's working really, really well right now, oil. High price of oil due to war in Ukraine, due to Saudi saying, we're pumping as much as we can, due to China saying, you know what? Uh, we're taking our way zero COVID and we're going to just open up our factories and people are going to die, but we're going to get back to work because our people need jobs and need income. And what that means is they need to fire up the factories. In Pittsburgh, they fire up the Corvettes when they leave town. Fire up the Corvette. We're going to New York City. I know you're saying you're making fun of people from Pittsburgh, I think. I might be. I might be. Um. But keep in mind, my first car was a Chevette, so I think I'm doing it in a very self-degrading kind of way. Um, but when you fire up factories, you need oil. Wow. And China's firing up factories right now. And this time last year, we were talking about how retail got it all wrong because they double ordered in the winter for spring. And the spring shipments didn't come till summer. And then they had all the wrong clothes. And companies like Target were saying, we gotta, we're in trouble. We're going to discount everything. That's not happening this year. So I'm being constructive. Yes, last year stunk. Yes, I would have liked last year to be half as bad. But I'm being constructive right now. 30. I see the construction. Anyhow, what do you see? I like it when you email me and tell me your first R rated movie. I like it when you email me and tell me that uh, me acting like I am have a crush on an actress is entertaining to you. I like the interaction is what I'm trying to say. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial. Big seminar coming up in February in Cupertino. You can learn more at robblackshow.com. You are listening to the Rob Black Show podcast. For more information on EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com. So if you're on the podcast, you can't hear the song. If you're listening to radio, you get to hear Alt-J playing. And you can hear the name of my dog in the song. 011011. I named my dog after a binary number. It is the international code for murder. I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> I want you to know that. Um, I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. People know me. I'm very important. I have many leather bound books and my apartment smells of rich mahogany. Why do I bring that up? Because I have a Netflix account. Netflix says they are going to completely 
go crazy psycho and crack down on, on people are sharing passcodes in the next 10 weeks. Cracking down on people's shared accounts, it has already implemented this model in Latin America, charging $3 per month to add people outside of the home. I hope they don't do that to me because I have two homes and I hope I don't have to jump through a hoop and say, see, I do have two homes. Um, but they might, I, and I get it. And then I'll have to say, well, I, I have a one price for my home and I got a second price for my second home. That's fine. But get this, you know, remember Squid Games last year? Come on. Contestants range from like one to 452 or something. And you basically, the premise, and I'm not going to spoil anything. If you had debt in your life, you were found by a game show and the game show put you in this game, but it wasn't a game show for television. It was a game show for billionaires watching you. And whoever won out of those 450 plus people got lots and lots of money. It was an international phenomenon to the point that instantly, right, there has to be a sequel. And there wasn't going to be a sequel. It wasn't supposed to be that big of a hit. But real life Squid Games players. Now, wait, 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 wait. What did you just say? Real life Squid player? Squid Game? Yeah. It was such a compelling show to watch where we were all rooting for different people. That Netflix said, let's make a game show. For Netflix. It's not going well. It's not a good idea to put people in brutal conditions and sets that are like freezing. One of the games that they've put their contestants through is unbearable. It's brutal. Trying to compete in temperatures that plummet to negative three Celsius. And I think the game is like freeze tag where you have to just stand in a pose. In freezing cold weather, people are leaving with hypothermia. Um, I don't know if production is going to get shut down. I don't know if this is PR for the production. Too many people were determined not to move, so they stood there for far too long. People were arriving thinking, I'm going to be a millionaire. They're leaving in tears. This tells you what's the problem with America. We come up with a movie like Jaws and we copy it with Orca. We're not very original thinkers. Um, Friday the 13th was a big hit. Studio next door said, you know what? We need Freddy Krueger. Um, again, another two shows that I watched on Netflix over the weekend. Um, how movies are made. And they gave the, 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 the telling of how Friday the 13th, the original movie was made, and the telling of how the original uh, Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street was made. And it's fascinating to watch for me. I know you're saying, you're giving me a lot of insight into your life. That's right. And for the record, Squid Games had 456 players. And strangely, someone emailed me that from the time I've started doing this segment. You can email me at rob at robblackshow.com. It's rob at robblackshow.com. Um, speaking of robblackshow.com, I put all of my media there. And I recently come to the decision that I'm going to be like Howard Stern and work in five-year chunks. So I'm going to give myself another three years. I'm going to renew for five more. Um, I'm going to create some drama in my life just so I can start thinking, what would I do in retirement? I think that's an important thing for you to think about. My board op, he's 30, he's in his 30s. And I want him to think about what he's going to do in retirement. I have no clue. Am I going to be a guy in charity? Am I going to be um, a guy who goes to prison and talks to life lifers and, you know, gives them a little touch without uh, the outside world? I don't know. Do I want to work at Home Depot and be a greeter? I kind of do. This is a, not a high pressure job, but I've been doing it for 25 years. So anyway, at Rob Black Show, you can go right here, right now. And if you play around with a site, you're going to see events. And in that upper right hand corner, you're going to see that I got a big event coming up at the Juniper Per Hotel, February 9th with Chad Burton, CFP of EP Wealth Advisors. We're going to be talking about retirement income and tax planning. You can sign up today. It will fill up. If you've been to more than three of these, please don't come um because they cost a little bit of money and i like seeing new faces it tells me that i'm not just talking to the same 60 people 120 people 1500 people 15,000 people um my podcast has been listened to by over 9 million times so i'm stoked that my audience is bigger and i'm downplaying it right now because i'm kind of a big deal self-deprecation is very very important the big event you can sign up for at robblackshoe.com. And I do think about my retirement income and tax planning. 
Um, I'm not much of a tax planner. I feel like if I earned it in California, I'll pay taxes in California. Um, I feel like with Netflix, um, if Squid Games was created and, and Netflix spent money on creating it, I don't share my password with people. My password is password one, two, three. I know you're saying you're just a big old confusing ball of confusion. So Tesla had a strong earnings. I think that's worthy of noting right now, right here. We're in earnings season. There's four of them per year. Um, earnings this year and job cuts are going to be the focus on do we go into a recession or not? That's my opinion. I like down periods in the market because I feel I can get great prices when companies are oversold, especially if companies have a lot of cash and can buy back their own shares. I feel like that's kind of working in my favor. New home sales were up modestly in December on a month-to-month -month basis on a year-to-year. -year. Awful. Month-to-month. -month. Good. That tells you something. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. Southwest CEO says customers are sticking with Southwest. Leisure bookings are strong. Yeah. Company is investing in cloud services. And there wasn't a failure in the scheduling software. I'm Rob Black. For more information about EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com.